at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Accused of taking aim at two police officers, a man is now in custody. What the suspect is saying about his arrest. And a new report coming to light on sexual abuse allegations in the country's largest Protestant denomination, the Southern Baptist Convention's response to the report. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting at 68 degrees. We're starting a lot cooler this morning than we have been, and it's kind of nice. And we had those storms on Saturday night, really got things going, that's for sure. We'll talk to Justin in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is May 23rd, and it feels like it wants to rain again this morning, doesn't it? Yes, it does, but I, I'm, I'm a fan of that. Me too, I'm me okay too. Yeah. So last week, remember our team was telling us that we might see rain chances, even storms over a series of days. Justin's here with an update on an early Monday morning. Good morning. Good morning to you guys. We do have more opportunities. You know, a lot of people are kind of bummed Saturday night because the storms made the infamous San Antonio yes. split and yes, we didn't get a did. ton of rain out of it. So we have some more opportunities, especially as we get into tonight and again Tuesday night. And we could see some se severe weather too. So that's kind of the, the trade off here this time of year. Here's what you need to know. Next 36 hours, we're expecting warm, more humid conditions today. There could be an afternoon storm. We'll start to see those develop late in the afternoon this evening out to the west of San Antonio. Then as we get into tonight, it's one of those classic uh, systems where we get a cluster of storms that work their way towards San Antonio. Some could be severe and there could be some pockets of heavy rain mixed in there. Tuesday we get a break and then some more storms late. So again, uh, two opportunities here I think where we could get some pretty decent rainfall totals. Let's talk severe weather though. What are the threats? I think the biggest threat today is going to be gusty winds with these storms that develop later this evening. And then hail and flooding will be there too, just to maybe a little bit lower. The tornado threat, thankfully, is low. Temperatures this morning, 69 degrees. It does feel good out there. We had a nice day yesterday after that front came through. 66 Kerrville, 71 in Hondo. Most places here in Bear County in the 60s right now. And uh, it, it will be a nice morning. We will get the temperatures to warm up to around 68 degrees by 7 o'clock and then 77 by 11 a.m., near 80 by noontime. And then we start to add in those rain chances later this afternoon and this evening. Temperatures topping out close to 87 with a 30% chance of rain at 4 o'clock. But those rain chances pick up as we talked about into tonight. We're going to talk much more about this and talk about our next chance for rain coming up on Tuesday as well here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Now to the latest, latest on a suspect accused of driving up to a police unit with two officers inside and shooting at them. That suspect is in jail. Police taking him into custody, but he tells our camera he's not their man. I just shoot at officers. I didn't. They got the wrong guy? Do you have something against officers? No, I want to be one. And that is 22 year old Tyler Ashbaugh. The shooting happened on the northeast side on O'Connor Road. It's a story we first told you about on GMSA. Neither of the officers were hit. One of them fired back, hitting the suspect's vehicle. The suspect initially got away, but Ashbaugh's vehicle was later found at a home on Buckmore near Thousand Oaks and O'Connor Road. That was a relative's home who gave police the suspect's address where they were able to take him into custody. It's very disheartening. These officers were just there uh, writing their police reports when this individual, for who knows what reason, decided to take a couple shots at them. Uh, for, for, I can only think because they are police officers. They're in the marked. The Texas did find a gun in Ashbaugh's home that matched the caliber of bullets fired at the officers. They also spoke with two witnesses. Their statements giving police enough probable cause to arrest Ashbaugh for assault on a peace officer. And this morning, police are still investigating the shooting of two men on the west side. One is dead and the other one is recovering despite being shot in the face. Now, the shooting happened around uh, yesterday on San Ignacio Avenue and Riva Street. Police arrived at the scene and found a man lying down in the front yard with a gunshot wound to the face. He was taken to the hospital. A few feet away, police saw a stopped vehicle at the intersection. Inside was the body of a 28 year old man. No word on his identity. In your morning headlines, a man in New York just riding the subway ends up dead, shot in the chest. The 48-year-old man was shot while traveling on the Manhattan Bridge yesterday morning. Witnesses say the shooter jumped off the train. New York police say the shooter and the victim did not appear to have any interaction before the shooting. Witnesses say the shooter was pacing in the subway train car before suddenly pulling his gun and shooting the victim. 
Michigan State Police say everyone is now accounted for following a deadly tornado that ripped through the town of Gaylord. It's some good news from officials. The tornado being blamed for killing two people and injuring 44. Those hurt are in the hospital. The damage led an official state of emergency declaration by the governor and local state of emergency by counties. The county extensive cleanup is underway throughout the town. The National Weather Service says it's the strongest tornado to ever hit that area. Now to a bombshell new report on sexual abuse allegations and alleged cover up by leaders of the Southern Baptist Convention. The report details a list of hundreds of ministers accused of abuse, many of whom were allowed to keep positions of power. ABC's Rihanna Nally has a story. This morning, new revelations accusing the Southern Baptist Convention of covering up sexual abuse for years. A 288-page independent report accuses the Southern Baptist Convention, the largest Protestant denomination, of stonewalling and denigrating survivors of clergy sexual abuse for nearly two decades. A charge also being made by this Kentucky woman. My father, my abuser, would baptize me and um, that baptism would also work as a type of waterboarding. Hannah Kate Williams is suing her father, who is a former pastor, and the Southern Baptist Convention, among others, for physical and sexual abuse, she says, began when she was eight years old. We are dealing with evil that spans over years across our nation, in these churches and in the denomination as a whole. Allegations first surfaced in 2019 following a report by the Houston Chronicle and the San Antonio Express News documenting hundreds of alleged cases in Southern Baptist churches, including several in which the alleged abusers remained in ministry. Abuse is one of the most underreported crimes. And uh, so I think there's many more that we have yet to hear about. SBC President Ed Litton said Sunday he is grieved to my core for the victims and said, I pray Southern Baptists will begin preparing today to take deliberate action to address these failures. That independent report was requested by the Southern Baptist Convention itself. It includes information on how the SBC can move forward, such as restricting the use of non-disclosure agreements. Rhianna Nally, ABC News, New York. 437, about 68 degrees. And is your lawnmower cutting it? <laughs> Get it, cutting it. If you're working harder than your mower is, it may be time for a new one. We're putting some popular ones to the test. The results are coming up. But first, it was a must-win So Did they? Highlights of the Western Conference Finals next in sports. And a quick look at the roads with Transky. Should be I-35. Oh, there you go. I-35 at Division. That camera's working. And the few cars that are on the road, they are moving. And waiting on more storms. How many days this week could we see a shower and storm? Justin will recap and his, his full forecast coming up. Time for a look at sports. Dallas Mavericks were in a must-win situation going to Game 3 of the West Hunter and Conference Finals last night. Mavs are returned home, trailing the Warriors two games to none. Golden State took control early. Steph Curry with the fake, steps aside, hits a three. Warriors go up 19-7 in the first six minutes of the play. But uh, Mavs rally late in the quarter off a turnover by Luka Doncic. Spins and drops it in at the buzzer. Dallas trails 25-22 after one. They carry that momentum in the second. Jalen Brunson under the basket for the lay-in. Dallas turns the tables to lead 42-33. But the Warriors rally and they take the lead 48-47 at the half. Third quarter, Curry knocks down another three. Golden State up by 10 going into the fourth. Andrew Wiggins has final say with a monster jam. So Dallas is back to in the corner. Both teams get to today to re get recoup and regroup. Game four of the Western Conference Finals is Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Over in the Eastern Conference Finals, game four is slated to tip off tonight. Heat lead the series against the Celtics two games to one. Game time is 7.30. You can watch all the action right here on KSAT 12. And time now, 441 and 68 degrees for now. And we've heard from Amber Heard. Now it's Johnny Depp's turn still to come more on what we can expect this week in the defamation trial involving the two celebrities. And after the break, which mower is best to tackle your front and backyard? Swelling your sides, Marilyn Moritz has answers. 
and welcome back. It's about 445. Trevor Reed, the American who spent nearly three years in a Russian prison, is speaking out about the horrendous conditions he endured there. ABC's Patrick Ravel has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, after nearly 1,000 days in Russian captivity, former U.S. Marine Trevor Reed is now free, readjusting to life on American soil and telling his story to ABC News. We saw you walking across the tarmac. What was going through your head at that moment? You know, you're thinking, maybe this is not happening. Maybe I'm still going to wake up right now in solitary confinement. Reed describing his time in a Russian prison camp and the brutal treatment he says was intended to break his will. I think they sent you to a psychiatric ward at one point. Yep, that was pretty terrible. Um, you know, blood on the walls. Again, there's a hole in the floor there for the toilet. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more, including Trevor Reed's message for his fellow Americans still trapped in Russia. With your GMA First Look, I'm Patrick Reval, ABC News, New York. Well, a regular chore in the spring and summer, of course, is mowing the lawn. If you're the one cutting the grass, you want your mower to do the best first time around, especially in this heat. 12 inch sides, Marilyn Mort shows us which mowers did well in tests and uh, found out it may be time to go green. Lawn mowing season, it's back. To help you find the best machine, Consumer Reports put mowers to the test. When it comes to walk behind mowers, they found battery power more than cuts it. This year we found that battery units perform just as well as gas in every tested category. Testers looked at how well mowers cut and mulch, as well as how easily they maneuver. If you're looking for easier, hassle-free mowing, Consumer Reports says consider switching to battery power. You don't have to spend as much on maintenance. They tend to be much quieter, and a lot of people tend to enjoy the bells and whistles that come with the battery powered units more than the gas. Even if you're not spending too much, you can find a battery mower that'll do a great job and won't break the bank. For example, you'd save more than $200 choosing this top rated self propelled Greenworks battery mower rather than the top rated Honda gas model. For half as much money, CR found this battery powered Cobalt from Lowe's offers excellent mulching. If you prefer to do the pushing yourself, they recommend this $350 Ryobi mower. You do need to charge the batteries. Most get 30 to 45 minutes of runtime. If battery just isn't for you, this self propelled Honda is less than $500. And for big lawns that call for a riding mower, CR says this John Deere S120 is a good choice. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the roads with the Trans Guide. Things were moving earlier and also right now at I-37 at Fair Avenue and I-37 in Houston. Justin Horn joins us now. It's going to be a very busy and interesting week here in South Texas weather-wise. Things are picking up. You know, it always goes this way. When we get closer to Memorial Day, it feels yeah. like things really tend to pick up around here. And we're going to have to watch a couple of systems that make their way into South Texas. Potential for some strong storms, potential for a little bit of heavy rain. We'll take the rain. We don't want the severe weather. Right now, we've got uh, cloudy skies, 69 degrees. Dew point is at 63. Easterly winds at about 8. Yesterday felt great. This morning feels pretty good, but we will see humidity starting to pour back in here throughout the day. 71 Hondo, 66 Kerrville, 72 right now in Pleasanton. And you'll find quite a few 60s here in Bear County at this hour. 67 over there at Randolph, 68 right now in Holotus with cloudy skies there. Our dew point trend today, we will see that dew point climb a little bit. Generally speaking, I think by the time we get into this evening, you'll feel the moisture a little bit more out ahead of this storm system that will be arriving tonight. Here is the case at 12 hour forecast. Cloudy skies this morning. We will see some sun towards midday by noontime, 79. Easterly winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. As we get into the afternoon, 86 by 3 o'clock, we're going to start to add in a 20% chance of rain. We bumped that up to a 30% chance by 4 o'clock. A lot of this is probably going to be west of San Antonio at this point. But as we get into the evening and overnight hours, our rain chances do pick up here. 60% chance, severe weather possible. And we'll see some gusty southeast Julie winds and, of course, some gusty winds with any of these storms that develop. Here is the current setup. Low pressure out to the west that moves east into Texas today. Scattered severe storms not only here, but across a large portion of West Texas as well. Uh, and so again, the, the rain is a good thing. We just don't necessarily want uh, this threat of severe weather and scattered severe storms possible anywhere from Gonzales, Carn City all the way out west. So this covers a lot of real estate and covers a lot 
of our viewing area. Here is a look at the forecast. So as we get into, say, 5 o'clock this evening, starting to see some of these pop-up storms, especially as you get out west, 30% chance of storms for that evening commute. But as we get into tonight, rain chances do pick up 60%. This is where we could see some pockets of heavier rain. This is where we could see some of those stronger storms. By tomorrow morning, this particular model shows more storms developing in the wake of that. We'll see how that plays out. But if we do get more storms there, it, it could be a messy morning commute tomorrow. And then we should, should see a break in the action Tuesday. 30% chance of rain. If we see any storms Tuesday afternoon, the threat of severe weather is still there. And then I think we see another line of strong to severe storms as we get into late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. This is 3 a.m. 60% chance of rain, some heavy rain moving in here. Uh, by the time we get into Wednesday afternoon, things will be winding down. Rain chances start to go away. But you can see here several rounds possible in the storm threats today. I think wind gusts top the list, but hail and flooding will be there too. In the moderate category, tornado risk is low. And as far as rainfall goes on the order of one to three inches, but it's really going to de depend on where these heavier uh, rounds of storms set up. Not everyone is going to see big rainfall totals. This is not a drop buster, but there could be some pockets of heavy rain and some pockets of flooding as well. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 40% chance of storms today, 60% chance tonight. We back it off to a 30% chance tomorrow, then a 60% chance tomorrow night into Wednesday morning. After Wednesday, the rain shuts off. Temperatures crank back up as we head towards Memorial Day weekend. So uh, stay tuned tonight. Have the KSAT weather app handy, and uh, we'll be here to let you know how this all unfolds. Oh, we've been waiting and waiting, not only for that break in the heat, but uh, this chance of rain, which continues. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, yep, we need it. We okay. really do. All right. Yeah. Going to be a good week. Thank you, Justin. Thank right you. now, 451, about 68 degrees. Glad you're with us on GMSA. And the cast of Saturday Night Live just got a lot smaller. Find out who officially left the show this weekend. It's coming up in your Showbiz Report. Real quick recap of lottery numbers. Pick three, three, four, one, Fireball eight. Daily four, one, eight, nine, four, Fireball seven. Cash five, 13, 22, 23, 24, 35. And Lotto Texas, 16, 17, 22, 25, 38, 46. Your Powerball numbers, 14, 15, 25, 52, 58, Powerball 11, Power Play 2. Good luck. And welcome back. It's 455. Saturday Night Live saw a number of its longtime cast members exit stage left this weekend. And the court will hear from Johnny Depp this week as he's expected to take the stand in a defamation trial against Amber Heard. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. The Doctor Strange sequel is still on top, but Downton Abbey, A New Era, enjoyed a strong second place debut at the weekend box office. The second film based on the hit TV drama bowed with 16 million bucks, taken by pundits as a sign older audiences are now returning to movie theaters. I did what I had to do. Another $31.6 million for week three of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, pushing its global gross to just over 800 million. Kate McKinnon there saying so long to Saturday Night Live on NBC over the weekend. One of four longtime show regulars who made their exits, oh, including you, Pete Davidson, Aidy Bryant, and Kyle Mooney. Deadline reports Amber Heard's defense team will call Johnny Depp himself to the stand as early as Monday in his $50 million defamation trial against his ex-wife. And The Price is Right host Drew Carey is 64 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Drew looks good. 456, about 68 degrees. And in the next half hour of GMSA, health experts continue looking for the reason as to why some children are developing hepatitis. The theories that, that they're looking into involve COVID-10. A man pretending to be a San Antonio police officer arrested and facing some very real charges. That story straight ahead. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Looking at I-37 at 9th Street, things are moving there, but pretty quiet this morning at 4.56. It is Monday, rise and shine. We'll be checking in with Steven very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The Bear County Sheriff wants residents to know how to identify a real law enforcement officer after arresting a man who pretended to be a San Antonio cop. 
And some imported specialized baby formula has made its way here. Where families can find it and where they can get their hands on it. We have the latest on the shortage. Outside with Live Camp, more storms in the forecast. Even if it's not happening right now, Justin wants you to have your eye on the skies and on our Weather Authority app. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, May 23rd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and enjoyed the slight cool down coming into today. Oh, it was unbelievable yesterday behind those big storms Saturday night. Justin's here with more on some what we hope is non-severe good news. Well, we are going to have some more rounds of storms. That much we do know that there is a risk for severe weather with these storms. It's it's that time of year. We're hoping that we get some rain out of this too because I know Saturday night some of us didn't get as much rain as we would have liked. Well, let's look at the rain chances here. Uh, today, about a 40% chance, and that's mainly going to be afternoon and evening. And then tonight, we bump it up to a 60% chance. That's when we could see some of our stronger storms, too. Tomorrow, maybe a little bit of a break. Still some chances of rain. And then another good shot Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And that'll linger over into Wednesday before we say goodbye to the rain chances by the end of the work week. In the meantime, 87 degrees today. We'll see about a 40% chance, as we said. Some storms during the afternoon. Southeast Julie winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. And partly to mostly cloudy skies. Let's look at the numbers right now. It feels good out there. 69 degrees at the airport. 60 Six Kerrville, 71, Hondo 72 in Pleasanton. And yesterday really was great considering where we had been. We got into the hundreds again on Saturday. Yesterday we stayed in the 80s. 67 New Braunfels, 68 right now, King and Lake. Our case at 12 hour forecast. Things stay quiet this morning, even through the noon hour, 79 degrees, partly cloudy skies. But by the time we get into the afternoon, rain chances start to jump up. 30% chance at 4 o'clock, 30% chance at 5 o'clock. And thereafter, we see those rain chances get even higher. We'll talk about the storm threats, what we can expect tonight, and again, coming up Tuesday night. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. Well, let's get over to Stephen now. I think we do have some issues on the roadways this morning. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Justin. Well, while things are looking quiet on the weather front for now, we aren't seeing the same situation on the road. So let's get a wide look at Trans Guide. US 90 at Leon Creek. This crash was reported just before we hit that 5 a.m. hour, and you can see that we have several lanes of traffic that are shut down at this point, flashing lights out there, and that's not a good sign. We're hoping that the person involved in this situation is okay, but we know that traffic there will likely build up uh, if this scene does continue at least for the next half hour or so. Let's take you right to the map and show you where that's pinpointed because we are seeing that in the westbound lanes. They are at US 90 near Callahan Road, not far from Leon Creek, as you just saw right there, but uh, not seeing a buildup in those westbound lanes just yet. Drivers, keep in mind, this is if you're going out toward Castroville. Again, they're at US 90, so we'll keep an eye on it, but let's go ahead and get a view of the metro area now at 502. No other issues to report just yet, but keep in mind, 502, that's still a pretty early start, so we'll likely see see just a few people out there right now. But if you have to hit the roads in just a moment and maybe your destination is San Antonio, well, we have these travel times for you at this hour. I 10 that journey from Bernie, a 25 minute drive time for you. 27 if you're on 281 southbound heading in from Mulverde and we're looking at 28 minutes, a little bit of a slowdown than usual there off 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. But the big issue right now going to be right here. US 90 at Leon Creek we will continue to watch the situation and give you more updates as the morning does go on. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Impersonating a police officer to burglarize a home, that is what one man is accused of doing. Now, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar wants to help the public recognize a legitimate law enforcement officer. As our Lee Waldman reports, sometimes it's as simple as asking for proof. Do you have anything you want to say to the alleged victim in this case? A very different view of 38-year-old Salvatore Alfieri than the pictures posted by Bear County Sheriff's Office today. According to Sheriff Javier Salazar, Alfieri is accused of impersonating a police officer and burglarizing a home on the far west side while wearing a ski mask and police tactical vest. He claimed to be with San Antonio Police Department. He claimed to be an officer that needed to do some sort of probation check uh, and indicated that he needed to do a search for contraband in the house. Alfieri was armed and once inside, he allegedly threatened the woman there. The sheriff says he made her give him cell phones and a large sum of cash before leaving. Her surveillance video captured him clearly, leading BCSO to identify him. A post by the sheriff's office Sunday led to helpful tips that Alfieri was at an intersection on Roosevelt Avenue waiting for a lift. SAPD actually got to the location before we did. They were able to perform a traffic stop on a ride chair that he had just gotten into. Salazar says even when law enforcement is undercover, 
where they typically arrive in teams of two. You can also ask to see their identification if you'd like to confirm they are who they say they are. You've ever got somebody that approaches you in plain clothes and is trying to pass themselves off as a law enforcement officer, ask to see this. And this is something that we will we will show you and it will help in, in identifying them for sure. When it comes to Alfietti, Salazar says it's important he's off the streets. The information that we were developing is that he was he was desperate for money. And so the concern obviously was that he was going to do it again and maybe the next resident wouldn't be so fortunate and something bad would happen. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And health officials are considering the theory that a stomach bug and COVID may have something to do with the increase in child hepatitis cases. Health officials remain baffled by mysterious cases of severe liver damage in hundreds of young children around the world. Some say the best available evidence points to a fairly common stomach bug. Investigators in the U.S. and abroad are exploring the thought that the possibility that they are stressing is not yet proven that the stomach virus and the coronavirus are combining to provoke a liver damaging immune system response. First batch of imported baby formula under Operation Fly Formula is now in the U.S. It's the first of several aircraft expected to arrive here in the coming days and weeks. However, the shortage is severe and getting worse. We're now learning of four more infants who had to be hospitalized due to complications related to that shortage. ABC's M. Wen has the latest. This morning, some relief for desperate parents. Enough specialty baby formula for half a million eight ounce bottles now in the U.S. after the administration used a C-17 military cargo plane to fly it in from Germany. President Biden tweeting these photos, writing, our team is working around the clock to get safe formula to everyone who needs it. This formula heading to hospitals and medical providers to distribute to parents whose babies are allergic to cow milk proteins. This comes as ABC News has learned at least four infants in South Carolina were recently hospitalized due to complications. Three of them admitted when their parents were forced to use alternatives to their normal formula and their babies couldn't tolerate the switch. Our patients and families across the country are in urgent need of this formula. Still, millions of parents remain stressed as data shows the shortage nationwide is getting worse with about 45% of baby formula out of stock. You can cut the desperation with a knife. Nothing else matters. The world stops until you find that formula. In New York City, the mayor declaring a state of emergency to prevent price gouging. President Biden announcing the first two Defense Production Act authorizations aimed at increasing domestic supply, including allowing key formula maker Abbott Nutrition to receive priority orders of raw materials. Abbott, which the New York Times says controls nearly half of the domestic formula supply, had to shut down a plant in February due to possible contamination. The White House also announcing another shipment of formula will arrive at Dulles Airport later this week. Abbott CEO expressed remorse in an op-ed at his company's role in the ongoing shortage, predicting they'd restart the facility in June, but wouldn't have any product to offer families until July. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 508, about 69 degrees. And WhatsApp is planning to drop its support software for some older phones. Is yours one of them? That story is coming up in Tech Bytes. The first new jobs heading to the U.S. where Hyundai is opening a brand new factory. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting somewhat cold. We're at 69 degrees for now, and uh, we're appreciating the small little break. We're going to be checking with Justin very soon. And welcome back. It's 5:11. In your morning consumer headlines, President Joe Biden is highlighting new jobs coming to the U.S. thanks to the automaker Hyundai. During his visit in Asia, the president toured the company's facility. The company announced a 5.5 billion investment in a new factory in Georgia. They also announced another 5 billion commitment that will go toward advanced automotive technology. The new deal is expected to create 81,000 jobs, and production will focus on electric vehicles. Georgia's governor also met with executives from Hyundai Motor Company during an official press conference. And do you love the Netflix show Stranger Things so much you wish you could wear it? Well, now you can on your face. The hit series is out with its own makeup collection thanks to a collaboration with MAC Cosmetics. The MAC X Stranger Things collection launched on May 15th, so it's all about the 80s, featuring vintage-inspired glam elements that pay tribute to the era the series is set in. There are two sets of makeup in the collection meant to let you recreate the show's 
theme. What do you think of the color palette there? Uh, yeah. It's very pretty. I know you're a fan of the 80s. Yes, yes, I'm a huge fan of the 80s. Those were, were good days for both of us back in the 80s. Yeah. 512 right now, 69 degrees. And Amazon is testing deliveries from local malls. The story in Tech Bites. We love our new apartment. Plenty of parking, big closet. There's too much pressure in the bathroom. Hey, good luck with the future in-laws tonight. Don't overthink it. But don't underthink it. Don't talk about your cover band. Don't talk about your fantasy team. Don't talk about your cats. You're going to do great. At least Geico makes bundling our renters and car insurance easy. We do save a lot of money. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, boy. Where are you going for dinner? 1987? For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. I'm 53, but in my mind, I'm still 35. That's why I take Osteo Biflex, to keep me moving the way I was made to. It nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. Osteo Biflex, available at your local retailer and club. Miss Allen over there isn't checking lesson plans. She's getting graded on her green investments with Merrill. A plus, still got it. Your money never stops working for you with Merrill, a Bank of America company. 516, welcome back. Apple reportedly looking into producing more of its products outside of China. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Apple's looking to increase production outside of China. Apple is reportedly telling its manufacturers the company is considering moving some production out of China, citing COVID lockdowns and growing tensions between China and the U.S. India and Vietnam are said to be the top locations under consideration for new Apple factories. Amazon is reportedly testing a program that has some of its drivers picking up and delivering packages from malls. Bloomberg says the test got underway last year. And if you have an iOS 10 or 11 phone, get ready to lose support for WhatsApp that puts owners of a 6S or older in jeopardy of losing the messaging app. Users are prompted to install the latest version of Apple's mobile operating system by late October because we all have old iPhones. They come out like crazy. Those are your tech bites. 517. Now there looks like there's some problems there at Culebra Road. Let's go mm -hmm. ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. It's not been a great Monday morning, Mark. Stephanie, as we get a look here, 410 at Culebra, another problem spot here on the Transguide camera. Let's get a wide look, and you can see that we have slow-moving traffic in that area and flashing lights. Uh, keep in mind, there's been some road work, that bridge work, I should say, that's been taking place there for a few weeks now, but we are seeing an incident that was popped up and reported by TxDOT. Let's go ahead and show you on the map. We were seeing a little bit of a buildup in the northbound lanes there at 410 not far from Culebra Road. Now it's not showing up or picking up on our map, but we're going to have to watch that area closely. Another area that we've been keeping an eye on right over here. Drive down over to US 90 westbound at Callahan. Now we are seeing a little bit of a buildup in those westbound lanes of 90. Just keep that in mind, but it's nothing too bad just yet. There's at least two lanes of traffic that are blocked off, so vehicles, although there's not a lot, are able to get by in just one lane. So make sure that you drive slowly and watch out for those first responders. Let's get a wide look at the map at 5 18. Thankfully, elsewhere looks pretty green around town in the San Antonio metro area. So no need to rush out the door, but remember to stay alert and always keep an eye out for those first responders, guys. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, Justin, I'll admit our viewing area is, is pretty big. Do we have any storms in our area right now? Not at, not at the moment. Okay. We're, we're watching some storms out in parts of Mexico, out of far west Texas. But I show you the radar because this is an indication of what's to come. We're starting to see more lift out here. And as the storm system gets a little bit closer this afternoon and the CDR rain chances will start to pop up. And, you know, I hate to sound dire, but it is imperative, really, that we get some rain out of these systems because we know where we're going, right, uh, in the, into the summer with dry conditions. And so we're hoping for the rain, although... The, uh, the the byproduct here is that we will probably get some severe weather too. So let's jump into the forecast and talk about all this. Here's the setup. That area of low pressure that's producing the rain this morning moves into Texas. Scattered severe storms possible from San Antonio up to Lubbock, back out to West Texas. This is the area of kind of favored for these stronger storms late this afternoon and this evening. And as we look at it locally, Basically, basically our whole viewing area is included in this risk for scattered severe weather. What can you expect when it comes to the severe weather? Hail, gusty winds being the main threats. And we'll show you those threats here in just a second. But first, I want to walk you through the forecast. This is 5 o'clock this evening. 
showing some isolated stuff. We're going to put in a 30 to 40% chance of rain late uh, this afternoon and this evening. Then as we get into tonight, rain chances start to pop up 60% chance overnight. What I think will happen is we'll get some storms developing out west and growing into a cluster of storms and that works its way east towards I-35 in San Antonio overnight. Then as we get into tomorrow morning, this shows more storms developing. Still a decent chance of rain. I think we get a little bit of a lull in the action during the day on Tuesday. Still a 30% chance of showers and storms. And then as we get into Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, this is 3 a.m. Wednesday, we get another round of showers and storms, this time along another front. So we have some opportunities here to get some rain and by I think Wednesday midday our rain chances cut off and we get into a drier pattern as we head towards Memorial Day weekend. Storm threats, especially the CV, I think wind gusts top the list. Hail and flooding will be there too. Hail is in the moderate category. Flooding I think will be in pockets localized flooding. We're not looking for widespread flooding and this will not be a drop buster. Tornado risk is low, thankfully. Uh, as far as rainfall goes, how much can you expect? In general, I'd say one to three inches, but there will be some pockets perhaps of heavier numbers and there could be some spots that maybe get a little bit less than that. But that's the general idea as we head throughout the course of tonight into tomorrow and then again Tuesday into Wednesday out of all of this uh, all of these chances for rain right now we've got cloudy sky 69 degrees dew point is at 64 and dew points well they're in the mid 60s this really is not bad for this time of year that drier air came in yesterday felt so good on your sunday still feels pretty nice out there right now I, I will tell you dew points increase a little bit as we get into the afternoon but the lower dew points this morning really helping those temperatures it's 69 degrees at the airport right now and a lot of 60s showing up here across bear county should be a great morning for the morning jog if you have that in your plans. 70 degrees by 9 o'clock will be up around 79 by noontime and then by the afternoon. There are our rain chances starting to kick in 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock and I'd say by 6 o'clock our rain chances jump up to 40 percent. We'll top out in the upper 80s and then tonight 60 percent chance of storms severe possible southeast Julie winds 10 to 15. So let's uh, put it all out there for you on the 7 day forecast. 30 percent chance of rain tomorrow another 60 percent chance Tuesday night into Wednesday that'll linger through part of the day on Wednesday before things really do clear out. Wednesday is going to be a cool day highs only in the 70s but then we jump back into the 90s by the end of the work week. It looks like the umbrellas can go away starting what late Wednesday into Thursday. I'd say so. And Memorial Day weekend is going to mm -hmm. be hot and uh, really quiet. Okay. Unofficial start of summer, although yeah. we feel like we've had a preview now for yeah. weeks. We had a nice preview last week yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the taste, Mother Nature. Yes. Uh, 522, about 69 degrees. And the latest installment of Downton Abbey seems to be a smashing success at the box office. Find out how it fared against Marvel's Doctor Strange after the break. And you pick three numbers, 341 three, Fireball 8, daily 41894 four, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 13, 22, 23, 24, 35. Lotto, Texas, 16, 17, 22, 25, 38, 46. And your Powerball numbers, 14, 15, 25, 52, 58. Powerball 11, Power Play 2. Good luck. Movie and music news to start your week. An iconic rocker's guitar helping bring awareness about a mental illness. And the anticipated release of Downton Abbey draws a lot of fans to the theater this weekend. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Big bucks for an iconic piece of music history. Kurt Cobain's guitar from Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit video has sold at auction for four and a half million dollars, far more than the pre-auction estimate of 600,000. The sale capped Julianne's auction's three-day Music Icons auction, which raised nearly 15 million dollars. Part of the proceeds from the guitar and other Cobain items go to Kicking the Stigma, an initiative which aims to raise awareness about mental health disorders. Let any be warned. The British are coming. Downton Abbey, A New Era was the top new movie at the weekend box office. The sequel about the aristocratic Crawley family includes a movie within the movie, inspired by film history. The film within the film is loosely based on a, a movie called Blackmail, which went from being a silent film to a talkie. One of the cameras that was being used had actually filmed uh, the original 
silent Ben-Hur film. So it was just fascinating being around all of that stuff. Hollywood is the ultimate dream factory. And I need dreams as much as the next man. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 69 degrees. And the bond between a local nurse and one of her patients is highlighting National Nurses Week. The emotional story of how that bond was made, that's straight ahead. Today, President Biden is unveiling the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. Coming up, how it might eventually affect Americans' wallets. President Biden says increasing trade makes it easier to get goods from overseas. We'll have more details on the president's new Pacific trade deal. And taking a look outside with live cam, preparing for some rain. We're at 69 degrees. It's nice and cool compared to last week. And good morning. It is Monday, May 23rd. Thanks for joining us this uh, Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, it got nice on Sunday. Definitely. Oh, it did. Yeah, fairly strong front made it uh, very pleasant around here yesterday. Uh, there were big storms and Justin says don't put away the umbrella yet. Not yet. You, you won't need it this morning. If you're heading out the door right now, you're fine. But as we get into the afternoon and evening hours, rain returns to the forecast. So here's what you need to know. Uh, warm, more humidity today. We will start to see some afternoon storms, especially west of San Antonio. And then by tonight, our rain chances increase dramatically. We could see some severe weather as these storms work their way west east across the area. Then we'll get a break on Tuesday with more storms Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. So we've got some more opportunity for rain here. I know a lot of us missed out on Saturday. As far as severe threats go, what can you expect this evening? Some gusty winds, I think, lead the way here as far as our threats go. Hail, flooding possible, although I think flooding will be localized, spotty. And hail, it, it's, it's going to be included here, here in the list, but it's in the moderate category, so a little bit lower than the wind gust threat. And then tornadoes are low. As we look at temperatures right now, 69 degrees at the airport, 71 Pleasanton, 71 in Honda, with 66 in Kerrville. We're off to a pretty comfortable start after what was a pretty nice day yesterday. 72 stints and 69 right now in Divine with cloudy skies for you. Here's how our forecast plays out today. Cloudy skies early, then some sun by midday. We get up to 79 degrees. East Julie winds anywhere from 10 to 15. As we get into the afternoon, we start to mix in those rain chances. 30% chance at 4 o'clock, 30% chance at 5 o'clock. After that, though, our rain chances do jump up. I think we top out close to 87 for a high later today. Much more on these rain chances when they end and uh, how much rain we can expect coming up in just a bit. we got to get over to Stephen now with the uh, We've got, I think we've got some issues going on on the roadways. What's the latest? Hey, good morning, Justin. A view at 410 at Gulabda doesn't look great. Uh, right now, talking to our friends over at TransGuide, we know that there is some bridge work that's been taking there for uh, taking place here, I should say, for a little while. But uh, earlier, we reported a crash in that direction as well. That was listed by TxDOT. Now we're not seeing that crash, but what we are seeing is just a stretch of lights. Those are some uh, vehicles that look like they're almost at a standstill due to some of that bridge work. So we're going to have to continue to watch that area closely. That crash may have already been cleared, but we are seeing some major delays for drivers. But we're still watching this situation here off US 90 westbound, and I just checked the corner of my eye. It does look like first responders were able to clear this crash that was reported just before five this morning. So that's some good news. Let's go ahead and show you how the map is looking right now at 533. Uh, the only slowdown we're seeing is right here along 410 where that road work is taking place. Again, that has been ongoing for a few weeks now, but we are really seeing the impact and delays with traffic right now. So back here on the map, you can see our friends at Transguide getting us a different view, checking the conditions right now, seeing that they're along the Axis Road. Just remember to drive safe. Hopefully that'll be cleared up before morning rush really kicks in. Guys. Stephen, thank you very much. We're just one day away from the 2022 Texas primary runoff elections. A key race we're keeping a close eye on affects uh, the area is Bear County Judge, former District Court Judge Peter Sakai, going against State Rep Ina Minjadas for dem the Democratic nomination. Whoever wins will face Republican nominee, former County Commissioner Trish DeBerry. We'll also be watching the races for Texas Attorney General and Congressional District 28. We have a sample ballot online. Also online, an article that breaks down everything you need to know, like how to vote, polling locations, and what you need to bring. The Texas primary runoff is tomorrow. Polls are, will be open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. In your morning headline, seven people are dead after a ferry in the Philippines caught fire. A passenger ferry carrying more than 130 people at the time. These are images from the scene. The Filipino Coast Guard says the fire started in the engine room. Passengers and crew jumped into the sea and were rescued by passing boats. 
24 people were hurt. The Coast Guard says everyone on board has now been accounted for. President Joe Biden says the recent cases of monkeypox is a concern. In his first public comments about the disease, Biden says it would be a concern if, quote, it were to spread, it would be consequential, end quote. On Sunday, one presumptive case of monkeypox was being investigated in South Florida. Monkeypox belongs to the same virus as smallpox, but its symptoms are milder. People usually recover within two to four weeks without needing to be hospitalized. However, the disease can be deadly. As of last week, there were 80 confirmed cases worldwide, including at least two in the U.S. and another 50 suspected cases. A new study says people in the U.S. have moved on from feeling anxious about COVID-19. The American Psychiatric Association reported that adult anxiety about COVID is at its record recorded lowest, recorded lowest with 50% indicating they're anxious about it. That's down from 65% in 2021 and 75% in 2020. Instead, now 73% of adults surveyed say they are now somewhat or extremely anxious about current global events happening around the world. Trade discussions happening far away could eventually affect the wallets of Americans here at home. President Joe Biden just announced his Indo-Pacific economic framework this morning. He says it consists of 13 partner countries. Amy Kiley has a look at the goals for helping people here in the U.S. The Prime Minister of Japan and the President of All right, we have the right story queued up, but apparently not the full package. We'll try to find out what happened and move on now. In this era of ordering everything online, many people still like to order takeout by using their phones, but Applebee says its employees are too busy to pick up the phone. The company announcing they're outsourcing over the phone orders to call centers. The restaurant chain's already been using call centers for phone orders at roughly half its nearly 1,600 locations. By the end of this year, Applebee's wants most of its locations on board with outsourcing their takeout calls. Applebee's executives say the call centers often provide a better experience for customers. And time now, 537 and 69 degrees for now. A 100-year-old woman with a need for speed has a birthday wish of her lifetime granted. We'll show you more. And coming up, the story of how one local nurse formed a strong bond with one of her patients. Outside with live cam, Justin has us on storm alert for later today. And we'll talk about the rest of the week. All in, all, when it's all said and done, how much rain could we get around here? We'll talk to him coming up. 540, welcome back. A life-changing full circle experience with a patient led a labor and delivery nurse to write about it for National Nurses Week this month in the Methodist Health System magazine. Our Courtney Friedman saw the article and she says she had to meet them. She says it shows how important that connection between a nurse and a patient's life can be and how in this case, strangers became family. Parenting. It's the most rewarding, <laughs> exhausting um, job there is. Devin and Shelton Aguilar Ma came to meet us with their adorable one-year-old son, Knox, in tow. Hey, hi, but he's not the only child in their family. We got pregnant on the first try with an IUI, um, and so we were over the moon ecstatic. Around 18 weeks, a scan showed Devin had no amniotic fluid, and by 19 weeks, she had an infection. They had to deliver a baby they knew had not survived. This is the first time that I had to interact with somebody who had lost a baby. It was just such a pivotal moment for me as a nurse. Kayleen Cortez was Devin and Shelton's labor and delivery nurse at Methodist Hospital in May of 2020. And with the pandemic prohibiting family to visit, she became their support system. I walked in and she had like a huge Harry Potter blanket. And I just remember like just being so relieved that I was like, okay, we at least like can talk about something. What do you say to somebody who just like lost this baby that they wanted so badly? Harry Potter is my jam. And so I showed her my little Deathly Hollows tattoo. Kayleen then helped deliver their baby girl. Our daughter's name is Polly. I just wanted it to do something special for them because we had made this connection. And so I just remember that quote from Harry Potter. K 
Kayleen printed out the quote, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. I did handprints and footprints on there for them. And to me, it was just something that was just a small gesture. But to Devin and Shelton, it was so much more. That's actually how we announced, I guess the birth of her um, was taking a picture of that. She has it like framed on her mantle that they like show it to everybody. That and my picture and they tell everybody about me. Fast forward 10 months, Devin was pregnant with Knox and was having a preterm labor scare at 30 weeks. We walked in, I was like, you know, so is, is there a nurse that works here named Kayleen? She's like, yeah. I was like, is she working by chance tonight? She's like, oh yeah. All of a sudden, a door like bursts open, I swear. <laughs> and Kayleen's like, oh my gosh, and just comes and we just start crying together. Kayleen helped deliver Knox, who was healthy, but had to be rushed to the NICU for precaution. I'm worried leaving her, yeah. following him, like, but I knew she had Kayleen to watch over her. Like, I've never um, expected to have that kind of connection in nursing. Now, reunions like this are common. Hi. Hi. A full circle experience showing the true power of nursing and the ripple effect of making genuine human connections. Courtney Friedman, Kate. And it's no accident. All those people met and will be friends for life. Yeah, a very special connection there. Knox looks adorable. 543 right now, 68 degrees. And San Antonio Pets Alive teams up with another animal rescue to fly some deserving dogs to their new homes in three different states. And welcome back. It's 545. Summer activities are in full swing. And this weekend, several city public pools opened up. And so did the splash pad at Morgan's Wonderland. So the splash pad will be open from now until Labor Day. And as always, they say their motto is to be accessible to all. Their splash pad includes waterproof wheelchairs. But that's not all. The one that we're standing right now is Rainbow Reef, um, which is a warm water splash pad for those that have um, sensory to the cold um, water. Um, so it's an enjoyable place for not only the kiddos, but the adults as well with the seahorses behind me. The adults like having the water splashing on their back. So fun for everybody. And we're also told that Morgan's Wonderland even offers wheelchair valet to make it easier for guests to transfer out of their personal wheelchair to maximize their fun. 34 dogs boarded a plane here in San Antonio on their way to their new forever homes. San Antonio Pets Alive combining to head the to, with heading home transport program. Another program called Dog is my co-pilot. Uh, let's see. Over the next two weeks, dogs will be able to find their forever homes across three different states. They're heading to Wyoming, others to Montana and Colorado. Right now, two San Antonio animal shelters are completely out of space in desperate need of fosters. This after an influx of people returning pets they got during the pandemic. Pets Alive wants to remind people how important it is considering fostering a forever friend in this time of need. We really need the help of our community to just um, encourage them to adopt and just to um, open up their homes for, uh, so that these animals can be saved. Shelters across San Antonio have pets that desperately needed to be adopted. The city of San Antonio said yesterday their cat room is full for the first time in a while. Whether it's a cat or dog, if you are considering it, we have all the information on our website at ksat.com. And there are still problems out there at Culebra Road and Loop 410. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. I would say for anyone that has to drive through 410 at Culebra right now, it, it make sure you pack your patience because we know that there is some column work that's continuing there. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But right now, let's get a drive around town. 37 at Pecan Valley. I would say the morning started off with a few issues out on the roadway. We did talk about a solar crash out there on 410. That has been cleared. And we also talked about a crash off US 90. So once again, that's been cleared. But elsewhere around town, 280 one at 410. The morning commute's not looking bad at all. Let's go ahead and take you right here to the map, though. That crash was picked up here. Got to get this cleared from our sequence off US 90 at Callahan Road. Not there anymore, so some good news. As we get a wide look at the map, things look fine so far, but you can see a little bit of a slowdown that's taking place off of 410, and that is because we are still seeing some column work that's been taking place here. Drivers, keep in mind that is current, but we should see that continuing at least up until Monday, June 6th. So uh, that will be from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning 
Lane. There's a full alternating closure in both directions right there at the Galebra Road intersection. So grab those phones, open up your camera up and camera app, I should say, and scan this QR code. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And on that list, you have to scroll to the bottom, but there will be a current list of closures that I just updated this morning that are taking place in your area. And of course, anything else that could be impacting that drive time. And the great thing about this list, guys, is that it not only includes the rest of these closures that are taking place during May, but some into the early months, uh, early days of June. So very handy information there. Very good. Thank you. And we all know we have closures for years to come. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. It will never end. Part of the San Antonio game around here for yeah. sure. Justin's here yeah. with more uh, on the showers and storms yeah. still in our forecast. Yeah, and speaking of the commute this morning, it is dry. Tomorrow morning could be a little bit different because we are expecting some storms overnight and maybe some wet roads tomorrow. We'll keep you posted. Of course, Stephen will keep you posted tomorrow, too. Uh, here's what we're looking at. We have storm system off to our west. This will be shifting in as we get into to the afternoon and evening hours. This is going to give us the lift we need to get storms going. And I know uh, we do need the rain. Uh, it'll be a very welcome sight to see the radar fairly active. Of course, we're also going to have to deal with the threat for severe weather. Scattered severe storms likely with this storm system and over a large area. So we're talking Lubbock down to Midland, Odessa, San Antonio, San Angelo, all included in this what we call slight risk, but we're going to call for scattered to severe storms within that area of darker pink you see there. This includes most of our viewing area, and I think the main threat for severe weather is going to come late this afternoon, this evening, and tonight. So let's look at the forecast, and we'll fast forward to 7 o'clock this evening. This is uh, where we are going to up the rain chances to about 40%. Shows a couple of isolated storms out ahead of I think a main area of storms that's going to kind of come together late this evening out west, initially over Del Rio, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, and then work its way east. And so by 11 p.m., we're looking at pretty widespread rain, it looks like, with some embedded, stronger storms. That's when we up our rain chances to 60%. So maybe around midnight is where we could see some of our heavier rain. That'll shift east. This model still shows a few more showers and storms tomorrow morning, hence the potential for a wet morning commute on your Tuesday. Then a break in the action, 30% chance Tuesday afternoon. If we do get any storms going though Tuesday afternoon, We'll once again have to watch out for some severe weather. And then Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, we get a line of showers and storms, some of which could be strong and producing some heavy rain. And this is when we see our next good chance for rain, 60%. And this will go into early Wednesday morning before things quiet down by Wednesday afternoon. So there are some more chances here to get some rain on your lawn. The storm threats. I think the main threat today or this evening will be uh, strong gusty winds and then some hail and flooding mixed in there. Hail in the moderate category, so is flooding. Tornado risk will be low. How much rain? One to three inches on average, and this is through Thursday morning, by the way. So this is an aggregate of those uh, two rounds of storms, so to speak. Uh, there could be some pockets, pockets with heavier rain for sure, but I think in general one to three inches is going to be sort of the average. Time lapse shows we've got uh, cloudy skies this morning. It's clouds trying to lower a little bit, but we haven't noticed any fog here in San Antonio. 69 degrees, two point is at 64, and temperatures fairly comfortable this morning with lots of 60s on the map. That dry area that came in yesterday helping us a lot when it comes to temperatures. Dew points will increase some though today, and I, I think by this evening, you'll notice the humidity a little bit more as that storm system brings in some of that moisture. 69 degrees by 8 o'clock, mostly cloudy. We'll go partly cloudy noontime, 79, but then we'll start to see some of those rain chances by 4 or 5 o'clock, 30% chance, and then even higher chances after that. Tonight, 60% chance. In fact, with that severe possible southeast chilly winds 10 to 15. 86 Tuesday, 79 on Wednesday. That's it. And you see those two kind of higher rain chances there tonight and then again Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. After that, it dries out and Thursday and Friday looks sunny and warm. The weekend looks hot too. That's looking more and more like uh, typical May weather. Yes. Storms and not quite as hot. It, yeah, exactly. It, you know, and around Memorial Day weekend, it seems like we've always see some uh, s severe weather, and I think that'll be the case again well, this week. And you have that nice bump back in here too, right yeah, before Memorial Day. Just yeah. in time. Yes. All right. Yeah. Well, you can maybe wash the car there in between. True. Yeah. True. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. We planned your whole week for you. Yeah. 553, <laughs> about 68 degrees. And a woman celebrating 100 years of life is also getting some of her birthday wishes granted, including one that involves a classic sports car. That story is coming up. 
Good morning. Coming up, the latest on the baby formula shortage. New York City declaring a state of emergency to prevent price gouging. And at least 10 states and Washington, D.C. report that more than half of their supply is gone. This after the first shipments come in from overseas. Also this morning, former Marine Trevor Reed speaking out on his nearly three years imprisoned in Russia, opening up about his dramatic prison swap and his mission now. Plus, the new American Idol is here live in Times Square, fresh off the season 20 finale. That's coming up right here on GMA. An Arizona Car Club made a decades-old dream come true for a woman on her 100th birthday. That woman, Audrey Matheson, born in 1922. For her birthday, family and friends wanted her to have experienced things she had, had not done in her lifetime. They arranged a visit from a baby wallaby thanks to Valley Wildlife Rescue. Then some birthday wishes from some local heroes, but the next surprise helped her fill her need for speed. She told caregivers she always wanted to ride in a red Corvette convertible. Members of a local Corvette club heard about her wish and made it happen. And the look on her face said it all. She reportedly told her driver to go faster. Matheson says her birthday this year was quite a day. Happy birthday, ma'am. Right now it is 557. You're watching GMSA ahead in our Next hour, the search is on for an Austin area woman accused of killing a professional cyclist who once dated her boyfriend and trans guide right now. Let's see how things are looking out there. That was quite a bit of traffic in that last shot. There's 90 at Leon Creek. The roads are dry right now, but folks, we are due for storms this week. We'll talk to Stephen and Justin coming up at the top of the hour. This morning, we are learning more about a man in the sheriff's office that says impersonated an officer. We're going to have those details. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. The Biden administration flies in nearly 40 tons of baby formula from Germany. How this can help parents nationwide and how soon we can see another shipment coming up. And some iPhone users are about to lose support for one popular app. We'll explain. And taking a look outside with live can. What a present, uh, pleasant surprise this Monday morning walking out to this. 68 degrees, very nice. And we're going to be checking in with Justin very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine, South Texas. It is Monday, the 23rd. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a nice weekend. I love the change in temperatures from Sunday to Monday. Mm -hmm. Very nice so far. And I love that we are expecting rain. We need more of it around here. We just don't want the severe stuff. Unfortunately, they kind of go hand in hand in the month of May. And Justin's got us on alert for more potential showers and storms. He said this could happen later today. Yeah, it's one of those situations where we often see in the spring around here where we get storms that develop out west they they come into a cluster and then work their way towards san antonio so i think that's what we're going to be looking at this evening and tonight right now the radar isn't revealing much but it is going to be our best friend as we get later into today and uh, we'll probably be showing this quite a bit this afternoon at the moment there's just some storms out in far west texas nothing here locally that we need to be concerned about it's just cloudy out there here's the setup we've got an area of low pressure that'll work in from the east this area in pink, darker pink you see here, is where we're expecting scattered severe storms today. So it's a, it's a broad area, but it does include most of our viewing area. And again, that'll be later this evening and tonight. That window, I think, when we have the best chance for some severe weather. 66 Kerrville, 67 in New Braunfels, 71 Pleasanton. It's 69 here in San Antonio right now. Uh, still in the 70s around Stinson, but everybody else looking at upper 60s here around the city. Uh, 67 Bandera, 67 out in Las Maples. Here's our case at 12 hour forecast. Cloudy early, some sun by midday. We're still looking at rain free conditions, I think around noon, 79. But rain chances start to kick in close to 2 o'clock and they'll steadily pick up as we get into the evening hours. 30% chance of rain at 5 o'clock, 87, but a 40% chance of rain, 6 p.m., 86 degrees. Good chances of rain overnight. We've got another shot at some decent rain coming up Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. We're going to talk about all of that, break it down for you, coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's check in with Stephen now for the latest on your morning commute. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Justin. Well, we have had that road work Alpha 410, but now we are seeing another issue popping up right here at 37, uh, 35 at 37. Pardon me. You can see our friends over at TransGuide are working to get us a clear shot of the conditions out there. And let me step out so you can see exactly what we are looking at at this point. Uh, uh, we have several first responders out there on the scene. This is a crash that was reported not long ago, and you can see slow moving traffic also in the area. We have noticed that there's at least two lanes of traffic.
traffic that are blocked off and you can see that we do have a first responder out there directing traffic. So not clear exactly how many vehicles are involved or if any of the drivers or people that were traveling in those cars are hurt. Hopefully everybody's OK, but we know that traffic that's not looking OK right now as we take you right to the map. You can see that buildup is taking place there along the southbound lanes of I-35, not far from US 281. Again, we're, now that we're in the 6 a.m. hour, this is that time when we really start to see more people out on the roadway, so we can expect to see that slowdown continue to build. Thankfully, as we get a drive around town or take a wider look at the map, I should say, uh, we're seeing a lot of green, but we are still noticing some column work that's been taking place off of 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. Uh, according to TxDOT, that should have wrapped around 5 this morning, but we are still seeing some crews out there, so drivers pack that patience this morning with that cup of coffee. Let's take a look at those travel times right now. We're pretty much green across the board uh, from some gain, pardon me, on I-10 westbound 29 minutes, 21 if you're heading on 87 Lavernia from those northbound lanes and 28 coming in from Floatisville. But back here, 35 at 37, not a great shot from Trans Guide. You can see that we do have a pretty massive scene out there. We're going to have to watch it closely and give you those updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Shoot. You shoot it, officers. They got the wrong guy. Do you have something against officers? No, I want to be one. I had an update now on a story we first brought you on GMSA. A suspect in jail this morning accused of shooting at San Antonio officers inside their patrol unit yesterday. The suspect spoke to our crew as officers walked him to the car. That was 22-year-old Tyler Ashbaugh accused of driving up to a parked unit and shooting at them just before 2 yesterday on O'Connor on the northeast side. One of the officers returned fire. No one was hit. Suspect got away, but Ashbaugh's vehicle was later found at a home on Buckmore near Thousand Oaks in O'Connor. That was a relative's home who gave police the suspect's address where they were able to take him into custody. It's very disheartening. These officers were just there uh, writing their police reports when this individual, for who knows what reason, decided to take a couple shots at them. Uh, for, for, I can only think because they are police officers. They're in the Detectives later found a gun in Ashbaugh's home that matched the caliber of the bullets fired at officers. They also spoke with two witnesses, giving them enough probable cause to arrest Ashbaugh for assault on a peace officer. A 38-year-old man is in jail this morning after police say he impersonated a police officer and burglarized a home. San Antonio police arrested Salvatore Alfari on Sunday at an intersection on Roosevelt Avenue after he got into a rideshare vehicle. Now, Bear County Sheriff's Office posted that they were looking for the man after a woman on the far west side said he came to her door on Friday claiming to be an officer doing a probation check. Once inside the home, Alfieri allegedly took several cell phones and some cash. Sheriff Javier Salazar says he was armed, and according to Salazar, law enforcement officers typically will show up in teams of two and will be able to provide identification to prove they are who they say they are. If you've ever got somebody that approaches you in plain clothes and is trying to pass themselves off as a law enforcement officer, ask to see this, and this is something that we will, we will show you, and it will help in, in identifying them. And Alfieri is facing several charges, including impersonating a peace officer and burglarizing a habitation with intent to commit a felony. In your consumer headlines, stock futures overnight pointing to a higher open on Wall Street after trading closed Friday just outside a bear market. The S&P finishing last week nearly 19 percent off its all-time high. A bear market is 20 percent below its high. A recall of peanut butter over worries about salmonella, the makers of Jif, recalling several sizes of both creamy and crunchy peanut butter after possible salmonella contamination was traced back to a processing plant in the state of Kentucky. And the first batch of imported baby formula under Operation Fly Formula is now in the U.S. It's the first of several planes expected to arrive here in the coming days and weeks. However, there is still a shortage and it's getting worse. We're now learning of four more infants who had to be hospitalized due to complications related to that shortage. ABC's M. Wen has the latest. Good morning. Operation Fly Formula brought in 78,000 pounds of baby formula Sunday. Officials say it can feed 9,000 babies and 18,000 toddlers for a week. This morning, some relief for desperate parents. Enough specialty baby formula for half a million eight-ounce bottles now in the U.S. after the administration used a C-17 military cargo plane to fly it in from Germany. 
President Biden tweeting these photos, writing, Our team is working around the clock to get safe formula to everyone who needs it. This formula heading to hospitals and medical providers to distribute to parents whose babies are allergic to cow milk proteins. This comes as ABC News has learned at least four infants in South Carolina were recently hospitalized due to complications. Three of them admitted when their parents were forced to use alternatives to their normal formula and their babies couldn't tolerate the switch. Our patients and families across the country are in urgent need of this formula. Still, millions of remain stressed as data shows the shortage nationwide is getting worse with about 45 percent of baby formula out of stock. President Biden announcing the first two Defense Production Act authorizations aimed at increasing domestic supply, including allowing key formula maker Abbott Nutrition to receive priority orders of raw materials. Abbott CEO expressed remorse in an op-ed at his company's role in the ongoing shortage, predicting they'd restart the facility in June, but wouldn't have any product to offer families until July. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. And topping today's tech bites, Apple is looking to increase production outside of China. The tech giant reportedly telling its manufacturers it's considering the move, citing COVID lockdowns and growing tensions between China and the U.S. India and Vietnam are said to be the top locations under consideration for new Apple factories. And if you have an iOS 10 or 11 phone, get ready to lose support for WhatsApp. That puts owners of a 6S or older in jeopardy of losing the messaging app. Users are prompted to install the latest version of Apple's mobile operating system by late October. 609, about 68 degrees. And much more to come on Good Morning San Antonio, including a recap from Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals. Our neighbors to the north finding themselves in a 0-3 hole. And the search for is on for an Austin area woman accused of killing a professional cyclist who once dated her boyfriend. Also just ahead, we're going to tell you about a local soon to be high school graduate and the challenges he overcame to find success. Keep that umbrella and rain jacket close by showers and storms in the forecast for a few more days. And then we look ahead to Memorial Day weekend. Can you believe it? It's already here. The unofficial start of summer 2022 full forecast is coming up. And welcome back. It's about 613. Our high school great graduate series gives us a chance to recognize some outstanding local students who have achieved both inside and outside the classroom. Jonathan Cotto introduces us to a South San Antonio high schools, uh, South San Honey High School's Jacob Sefuentes and tells us about the challenges that he has faced. Jacob Cifuentes is no ordinary senior at South San Antonio High School. His academic career has been a constant juggle between performing as a student athlete and hitting the books. He says his academic success started with his triumphs in football. My freshman year was uh, a good year. I, I played one freshman game, went up to JV. Cifuentes playing varsity for three consecutive years. He says it's been football that's really helped keep him focused and determined in and outside the field. It's a very uh, good experience to have like sports, not just football, just any sport, track, basketball, any of those. It's really good for, I think, all the students that are in it because it helps having that, that guide of a, the coach guide you like a father figure. It's, it's a very good thing. He says one of his biggest challenges has been learning to balance his time between athletics and academics and adds the pandemic didn't exactly make things easier. It was a lot to handle mentally too, physically, mentally. But yeah, when school opened up again, thank God it did. Uh, I was able to come in and get some help from the teachers and tutor and I was able to get my grades up to where I wanted them to be. Cifuentes never threw in the towel. Instead, he worked harder. And that hard work has paid off. He's been chosen to play in this year's All-Star football game and is a member of the National Honor Society. Don Thomas, one of Cifuentes teachers and NHS advisor, says he's an excellent illustration of a student who exemplifies the qualities of a humble and admirable character. Jacob himself has completed over 200 service hours his senior year of high school. 
our requirement was only 50 because of COVID, because of the limitations it put on. So he just really went above and beyond. He's always been there. He's offered to help. He's done whatever for his school, for his community, and he's always giving back. Jacob was accepted to Texas State University and plans to major in biology with the goal of attending dental school. There's a saying that my um, coach would say. He says, you aren't born a winner, you aren't born a loser, you're born a chooser. So I think those words have uh, really helped with the uh, choices I've made. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Coming up later this morning on GMSA at 9, we're highlighting a college grad who refused to give up on her dream of getting her degree. Sarah Costa will share her story and what she has planned next, plus how a local organization is raising awareness about mental health programs in our area. Those stories and much more today on GMSA at 9. And for now, let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, looking like a nightmare out there here off 35 at Piney. You can see back to back traffic in those flashing lights. We are looking at a crash that was reported just before six this morning. Now, uh, we haven't really been seeing traffic moving very quickly through this area at all. You can see that there are several lanes that are blocked off from this view at Transguide, and we are seeing that buildup that is taking place along I 35 southbound near 281. Uh, I stayed pretty consistent, I would say, for the last 15 minutes or so but it will likely stretch as we get into that morning rush hour. But now that the morning is moving, we are starting to see some of those problems that are moving on in. Let's take a drive not too far from there. This is the latest one we are adding to our list off Loop 410 southbound there at WW White Road. Not seen a slowdown, but this was reported by TxDOT just minutes ago. So we'll have to look at the conditions out there and see how that impacts that drive time. Let's go ahead and get a wide view at the map at 617, and it looks like there may be another issue along 410. We'll have to find out what's going on there, but you can see our map also detecting a stall not too far up 35, but it has been a pretty busy morning, but drivers make sure to pack that patience. We'll continue to watch the roads closely, but the man keeping an eye on the forecast and on the sky, Justin Horn. Thank you, sir. We got to talk uh, bus stop weather this morning. I know we only have what a week, week or two left of school, but uh, we still got to head out to the bus stop and, and temperatures this morning. Not too bad. 68 degrees cloudy. You shouldn't need an umbrella this morning. You may consider bringing one for the afternoon, although I think it's still probably dry when we get out of school today. 85 degrees southeasterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. It's tonight that our storm chances really start to jump up and we could see some severe weather mixed in there too. Let's go outside for you right now. We've got cloudy skies starting to see a little bit of light on the horizon. 69 degrees at the airport. Northeasterly winds at about six. Dew point is at 64. Those dew points came down nicely yesterday, starting to build back a little bit this morning. 66 in Kerrville, 71 Hondo, 71 Pleasanton, 69 right now in Beeville, and a lot of 60s in the map here around Bear County this morning. 67 at Randolph, 68 right now in Holotus with cloudy skies. Here's the KSAT 12 hour forecast. 70 degrees, 9 o'clock. We'll start to see some sun by noontime. 79 degrees, 82, 1 o'clock, 85 by 2 o'clock. Then we start to bring in the rain chances. They'll start to pick up around 4 or 5 o'clock. 87 the forecast high. I still think around this time period most of the weather is going to be to our west but those rain chances really do pick up as we get towards 6 7 8 9 p.m. As we look at the current setup we have an area of low pressure at least a, a trough developing out to the west. This works its way into Texas today and out ahead of it scattered severe storms a possibility. So this area here in dark pink that's where we expect to see some of the strongest storms as we get into the afternoon and evening hours and this does include parts of our area, really most of our area uh, this evening. And uh, here's a look at the forecast by say seven o'clock. We're starting to see those storms build out west. Del Rio, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass. You're in line to get some strong to severe storms by the evening hours. This cluster of storms works east. And so by 11 p.m. Midnight, we're seeing the rain here around San Antonio. A decent chance 60%. We could see some pockets of heavy rain too. Still some showers potentially around tomorrow morning, maybe even a few thunderstorms, then a break in the action on Tuesday, just a 30% chance of showers and storms. Still, the threat for severe weather is there. If we do see some storms that develop Tuesday afternoon, they could be strong to severe. And Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, here we go again. Frontal battery brings another line of weather into the area, 60% chance of rain. So we've got a couple shots here, good shots. Add some rain if you missed out on Saturday night, and I know a lot of us did. Wednesday morning, 
by midday Wednesday, a lot of this is starting to move out. Storm threats today. Wind gusts are going to be at the top of the list with these storms as that line progresses towards San Antonio tonight. Hail and flooding in the moderate category and the tornado threat is low. As far as flooding goes, I think it'll be pockets of heavy rain. And in general, we're talking about one to three inches. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where the heaviest rain will fall. But in general, these should be some decent numbers. And this is through Thursday morning. So this accounts for both uh, periods where we have our high rain chances. And that is Monday night and again Tuesday night. In the meantime, 40% chance of some afternoon storms today. 86 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain during the day. But it comes back up to a 60% chance Tuesday night. And then during the day on Wednesday, we'll start to see a lot of this moving out of here. 79 on Wednesday, that's it. Clears out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and temperatures warm up as a result. 92 on Saturday, 95 by Sunday, guys. Back to the 90s, but we'll enjoy this small break for now. Yep. Thanks, Justin. 621, about 69 degrees. And have you been watching the NBA playoffs? Things are not looking so good for the Dallas Mavs. Just ahead on GMSA, recap from Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals. Trilogy for COPD. <coughs> Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on. If you've been playing down your COPD, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's time to make a stand. Start a new day with Trilogy. And I'm feeling good. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. 625, welcome back. The NBA playoffs continue and our neighbors to the north. The Dallas Mavericks are trying to dig themselves out of a massive hole at the Western Conference Finals. Mavs hosting the Warriors in a pivotal game three in the best of seven series. Last night, Dallas went into this one down two games to none against Golden State. Warriors up by 10 going into the fourth before they pulled away. The Mavs misfortune continues. Golden State takes game three in Dallas. The final from American Airlines Center. Warriors win at 109 to 100. Golden State has a chance to finish off Dallas in game four tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Over the east, Boston Celtics will host the Miami Heat in game four tonight. Miami currently has a 2-1 lead over Boston, so the Celtics will try to even it up before the series shifts to Miami. Heat Celtics tonight at 7.30 in Boston. And time now is 626 and 69 degrees for now. My father, my abuser, would baptize me. And um, that baptism would also work as a type of waterboarding. And ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, we're going to have the new revelations accusing the Southern Baptist Convention of covering up sexual abuse for years. We we'll also have details on this horrifying fairy fire over in the Philippines. A man is facing charges for allegedly impersonating a police officer, and investigators say it may not be the first time. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. We are dealing with evil that spans over years across our nation, in these churches and in the denomination as a whole. And a nearly 300-page independent report accuses Southern Baptist Convention leaders of mishandling sexual abuse allegations and details ahead. The forecast this week is still rather unusual. We're still looking at a chance of showers and storms. When and where? Justin is standing by with the details. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, May 23rd. Thanks for joining us. Yes, waiting for to hear more about the chance of storms, but also a nice break in the temperatures. Oh, yeah, it was awesome yesterday after that front came through. Big storm Saturday night. I know you yeah. were, we were all watching those. There was quite a bit of hail in some of those storms earlier in the evening. Right, hail, a lot of lightning, mm -hmm. and then they came to San Antonio and just kind of 
fell apart. What do you call it? The, the typical San Antonio split? split? Yeah. Uh, so I know that that was unfortunate. We, we do have more opportunities for some storms on the way, though, especially as we get into tonight and again Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. So here's what you need to know as we look at the outlook here and the headlines uh, for the next 36 hours or so. Warm, more humidity today. We could see an afternoon storm. And then tonight our rain chances pick up pretty significantly. We could see some severe storms, too. That's a possibility, especially initially out west and then on Tuesday maybe a bit of a break but then more storms late uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning uh, looking at the pollen count if you missed it yesterday molds were in the moderate category they jumped up because of that rain we'll see where they, they sit today grass and pigweed are low but I think molds are going to be our main threat here going forward because rain is in the forecast as we look at temperatures here, pretty comfortable right now, 69 degrees. Yesterday was fantastic. Finally brought our May average down a little bit because it had been so hot, hot to start. Uh, yesterday felt good. Today, we'll get temperatures back in the uh, mid to upper 80s after starting off in the 60s and 70s this morning. Clouds begin to clear out a little bit midday, 79 degrees by noontime, 82 by 1 o'clock. And then we start to put in the rain chances, 30% by 4 o'clock, 30% by 5 o'clock, but a 40% chance at 6 o'clock, 86 degrees. And by tonight, we'll bring those rain chances up to a 60% chance. We'll talk about the threat for severe weather, too. We'll detail that for you in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Stephen now. It's been sort of a messy morning commute, even though there's no weather. Yeah, the roads have been dry, right? But we've been seeing some of those issues popping up. Let's get a closer look at TransGuy 35 at Pine. As we get a, a wider look, you can see that it looks like first responders have blocked off an exit there. Uh, not a clear shot, as we can see from what we're looking at from this camera view. But we do know first responders that have been out there for almost an hour at this point working to clear this crash scene right now. We're not sure if the driver faced any injuries or if there are how many vehicles were involved. We're hoping everybody's OK out there, but right now traffic has just not been looking good. Uh, we can see that buildup taking place along the southbound lanes of I-35 near 281 where that crash was picked up. Uh, now these directions are I should say alternative routes are always subject to change. I was going to suggest exiting New Braunfels uh, and getting on a Grayson if you could probably try to avoid all of that mess there, but you can see right now you'll still encounter a slowdown. So right now, just make sure if you have to travel through I-35 southbound near 281 that you move over, slow down, give those first responders plenty of room there. Let's go ahead and get a wide look at the map, though. We are still seeing also a slowdown along 410 due to some column work that was supposed to wrap around 5 a.m. according to Tech Stop, but we are still seeing some crews working, so we're going to have to keep our eyes on that. But thankfully, if you are traveling to the Alamo City, there's no need to rush. We're just about green across the board, but again, the usual slowdown for our friends up in Bulverde, 28 minutes to the downtown area. One last look here at Transguide 35 at Pine. We'll see how this progresses as the morning does roll on. Have more updates right here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Could there have been other victims of a phony police officer? That is one question that may be answered as the Bear County Sheriff's Office continues to investigate. So far, they've identified two people who were victimized and arrested a suspect in this case. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with more on the story. And it sounds like there could be more to come, Katrina. Well, that's how it sounds exactly. The Sheriff's Office. Sheriff Javier Salazar spoke to reporters yesterday following the suspect's arrest, and he mentioned how confident he was when he allegedly committed these crimes. He says that could be an indication that the suspect has done this before. Uh, what that person, 38-year-old Salvatore Alfieri IV, is accused of doing is impersonating a San Antonio police officer and then robbing two people after talking his way into their home. The sheriff and the affidavit both say this happened last Friday. They say Alfieri was armed with a gun when he went to the home and demanded to be let in to do a probation check on a person who wasn't there at the time. He allegedly made a woman and teenage boy turn over their cell phones and sit on a couch. The sheriff says he took money and a gun from the home, then drove off. Well, investigators were able to identify him, they say, through that car, which was rented. They also had pictures from surveillance cameras, which they shared on social media, and they say those helped them track down that suspect. Now, in that news conference, Sheriff Javier Salazar said that investigators learned that Alfieri was desperate for money, and they say that they believe he could have been planning to do this again in the future. Again, they are trying to figure out whether he did, in fact, do it in the past. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you, Katrina. New this morning on our website, two San Antonio police officers get lengthy suspensions after crashing into a car without stopping to help the people inside. That's according to suspension records. The suspensions happened last month, but the crash took place back in November. We're told the officers crashed while they were on their way to respond to a call that reportedly violated policy when they did not stop to help. And the U.S. Marshals Lone Star Fugitive Task Force is searching for an Austin woman accused of killing a professional cyclist who once dated her boyfriend. 35-year-old Caitlin Marie Armstrong is wanted for the shooting death of 25-year-old Anna Mo Wilson. The Austin police say a friend found Wilson bleeding and unconscious from multiple gunshot wounds. She died at the scene. We have more details on both of these stories posted over on our website at ksat.com. Seven people are dead this morning after a fire on a passenger ferry in the Philippines. They're investigating this passenger ferry. Uh, the Filipino Coast Guard says the vessel was headed from an island to Quezon when the fire started in the engine room. More than 100 others were rescued, some treated for injuries. In total, there were 134 passengers and crew on board. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is asking a lot of questions after a rise in a mysterious liver illness. It's impacting kids around the world. Now, evidence points to a fairly common stomach bug. However, experts are confused because it isn't known to cause liver problems in otherwise healthy kids. CDC officials are looking into 180 possible cases across the U.S. More than 20 other countries have reported hundreds more of those cases. Now to a bombshell report on sexual abuse allegations and alleged cover-up by leaders of the Southern Baptist Convention. The report details a list of hundreds of ministers accused of abuse, many of whom were allowed to keep positions of power. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has the story. This morning, new revelations accusing the Southern Baptist Convention of covering up sexual abuse for years. A 288-page independent report accuses the Southern Baptist Convention, the largest Protestant denomination, of stonewalling and denigrating survivors of clergy sexual abuse for nearly two decades. A charge also being made by this Kentucky woman. My father, my abuser, would baptize me and um, that baptism would also work as a type of waterboarding. Hannah Kate Williams is suing her father, who is a former pastor, and the Southern Baptist Convention, among others, for physical and sexual abuse, she says, began when she was eight years old. We are dealing with evil that spans over years across our nation, in these churches and in the denomination as a whole. Allegations first surfaced in 2019 following a report by the Houston Chronicle and the San Antonio Express News documenting hundreds of alleged cases in Southern Baptist churches, including several in which the alleged abusers remained in ministry. Abuse is one of the most underreported crimes. And uh, so I think there's many more that we have yet to hear about. SBC President Ed Litton said Sunday he is grieved to my core for the victims and said, I pray Southern Baptists will begin preparing today to take deliberate action to address these failures. That independent report was requested by the Southern Baptist Convention itself. It includes information on how the SBC can move forward, such as restricting the use of non-disclosure agreements. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Now to a, a rather in your GMA first look, Trevor Reed, the American who spent nearly three years in a Russian prison, speaking out about horrendous conditions he endured there. That's coming up at 7 a.m. right here on KSAT 12. The 2022 Texas primary runoff elections are tomorrow and a key race we are keeping a close eye on that affects our area is Bear County Judge. Now, former District Court Judge Peter Sakai is going against State Representative Ina Minhades for the Democratic nomination. Whoever wins will face Republican nominee, former County Commissioner Trish DeBerry. We're also going to be watching the races for Texas Attorney General and Congressional District 28. We have a sample ballot online. And we also break down everything you need to know, like how to vote, polling locations, and what to bring. The polls will be open tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Happening today, people in Bear County can enjoy a day at the San Antonio Zoo at a discounted rate. Today, the price of admission will go down to $8 per person. Get a ticket at the front gate just sir, to be big proof of your San Antonio residency. The zoo will be open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. 640, about 69 degrees.
Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Our men and women in uniform make major contributions around the world in more than just one way. And coming up on GMSA, we'll show you a look into a specialized group of instructors training militaries from other countries. 644 San Antonio is Military City USA, and our men and women in uniform make major contributions to the world in more ways than one. And today our Jonathan Cotto goes inside the gates of Lackland Air Force Base and gives us a look at a specialized group of instructors. Behind the walls of Lackland Air Force Base exists an installation exclusive to San Antonio, the Inter-American Air Forces Academy. Well, IAFA offers one of the most unique missions in the United States Air Force Arsenal, and that is we provide instruction to our partner nations in Latin America across 32 different courses, all in Spanish. The Academy, older than the United States Air Force itself, celebrating almost 80 years of service and providing military education and training to personnel across 12 partner nations. And if you're wondering why this is so important, Jimenez answers that in two simple words, security cooperation. We need partners and we need it more than ever next to our borders. So Latin America serves as a very critical strategic point where we need to make friendships, influence uh, uh, partnerships, and of course build such capacity that when needed, we can all operate in the same events, whether it's a hurricane or any other crisis, we can help each other out. Instructors at IAFA have also had the opportunity to visit with partner nations to assess how the skills learned here have been put to use in their own countries. For Technical Sergeant Luis Velez, that experience was most recently with the Mexican Navy, who was in need of creating an effective logistical system. He was able to bring us in and we provided the training that basically made, made sure that Mexico was not just organizing their system, but their manpower. So we were able to assess and basically taught everything that we are doing. And when you go to a Mexican Navy warehouse now, you see what the United States Air Force did there so much that you couldn't even tell apart. Same warehouse, same training, and to, to me that's great because we're not changing just lives but nations. From security forces training to logistical support, IAFA creating a one-of-a-kind experience for both American instructors and instructors-to-be, who say traveling to San Antonio and learning from the very best is an absolute privilege. No, eh, es lo mismo, culturalmente es una experiencia que no tiene un valor tangible porque el aprender de otras personas, de sus vivencias y de la cultura que cada país tiene es algo que no lo puedo uno medir. Entonces es una, eh, una experiencia que es muy enriquecedora. Technical Sergeant Fusca from Colombia ended that interview saying una experiencia enriquecedora, meaning a very enriching experience, adding the opportunity to work with the United States Air Force here in San Antonio from a cultural and professional standpoint is immeasurable. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Great story. Let's get a look here at TransGuide. Things have not improved at 35 at Pine. As we get a wide look, you can see that that exit ramp to Johnson City has been blocked off by first responders. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. This crash was reported just before 6 a.m. and first responders are still out there. Details are still limited, but we will work to get that information as the morning does go on. But as we get a look at the map, uh, we aren't really seeing the slowdown picking up in the southbound lanes anymore. What we're seeing is 35 northbound there uh, is getting a little bit busy, and that's maybe just the usual slowdown. So we'll have to watch it closely and see how the morning does progress. But we have another issue to talk about here as we take a drive over here to the northwest side there off Loop 1604 eastbound there at Tradesman Drive. That crash was reported just minutes ago and you can see that slowdown has been stretching for a little while goes back some way. So drivers off 1604 make sure that you drive carefully. Maybe look for a different route if you have to head out there. We all know 1604 can be a nightmare at this time. Let's get a wide look at 647 morning rush is here and with it we have seen problems that have been brought to the roadways so drivers just remember to be careful out there one last look though 35 at Pine Street we'll continue to keep our eyes on the road but a man who's been keeping an eye on the sky got to say that again Justin Horn what's the <laughs> forecast going to look like appreciate you Steven it's looking a little more active as we get into tonight let's look at the radar right now <clears throat> excuse me we noticed we've got some showers off to the west that have uh, kind of stayed in place throughout the morning out, out around Fort Stockton and the radar is showing that these are staying well to our west. But I show you this as an example that we're starting to get some lift moving in storm system off to the west. They'll give us more lift as we get into tonight and the radar will be our best friend. You'll see us using this quite a bit, I think, as we get into the afternoon and evening hours. So here is the setup uh, trough out west of Mexico. This works its way into Texas today. 
And as it does, it should give, give lift to scattered showers and storms, some of which could be strong to severe. The risk, a pretty large area here where we could see some strong to severe storms. That includes most of South Texas and most of our viewing area. Again, uh, the CVN tonight would be the main sort of time frame where we'll have to be worried about that. Here's a look at the forecast. <clears throat> and as we get towards 7 o'clock, some isolated storms popping up here around San Antonio. But it's out west where we see the bulk of the heavy rain starting to pick up. Rock Springs out to Del Rio. And this is certainly a time frame where we could see some of those stronger storms. By 11 o'clock, that cluster of storms is moving closer to San Antonio. 60% chance of rain during this time frame for us here in town. If those showers and storms move east, could see a few more develop by tomorrow morning. And then a little bit of a break in the action on Tuesday, just a 30% chance of rain before we get another line of showers and storms coming in Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, this time with a frontal battery. So we bring the rain chances back up to 60%. Bottom line here, we've got a couple of opportunities to see some heavy rain. How much rain will that add up to? We think maybe one to three inches on average around the area. As far as severe weather goes, wind gusts are going to be our main threat with any of these storms that developed this evening and then hail and flooding in the moderate category. Tornado risk will be low and we talked about that rainfall on the order of one to three inches. There, there's going to be some spots that maybe see a little bit less a few spots, localized spots that could see more, but I think it averages out somewhere in that range and we can certainly use it. We just don't want it to come with the severe weather, unfortunately. It's that time of year outside right now. We've got 69 degrees at the airport. Cloudy skies northeast surely winds at about six. Dew point is at 64 70 for places like Hondo and Pleasanton still in the 60s though for a large portion of Bear County and we're down to 64 burning stage this morning. So it does feel pretty good. Our case at 12 hour forecast cloud starts to erode a little bit by midday 79 degrees 82 by 1 p.m. And then we'll start to see some rain chances pick up for five o'clock. We've got about a 30% chance of rain. We up that to a 40% chance by 6 p.m. And then tonight we're going to be looking at about a 60% chance of rain. 30% chance Tuesday, 60% chance again Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Showers and storms linger a little bit on Wednesday, but I think by Wednesday evening, most of this is moving out of here. And then we get clear skies Thursday, Friday. Uh, so the, the rain shuts off with that in mind. We'll take as much as we can get tonight as long as we don't have the flooding and as long as we don't see a lot of severe weather. That's the hope, but uh, we'll be here to keep you posted on whatever happens. We know you will. You and the team. Thank you very much, Justin. 651, about 69 degrees on your Monday morning. And do you have student loan debt? If so, you're not alone. In fact, data shows 65% of college students graduate with debt. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to have some clever ways to pay off your student loan. Outside with live cam on a feeling a little bit cooler uh, Monday morning. If you're headed out the door and about to start your morning commute, we're going to need to check back in with Stephen Cavazos coming up here in a matter of minutes. Good morning, everyone. Time now is 6.55. Let's get one last look here at 35 at Pine. Wide look does show first responders been out there for over an hour now working to clear this crashing. You can see that exit there to Johnson City has been blocked off and where we're seeing that buildup is really in the northbound lanes of 35, uh, but that crash was reported by Texas in the southbound lane, lanes of near 281. So you have to watch out there, but we also have to talk about what's taking place over here off loop 1604 eastbound there at Tradesman Drive where another crash was reported. This one caused and some pretty serious slowdowns in those eastbound lanes, but those westbound lanes as well, where that yellow is, is showing a little bit of a buildup. Wide look at the map does show that we aren't seeing any other crashes reported, but we are seeing the usual slowdowns. We'll have to continue to watch an eye on things, but let's take one last look 35 at Pine. Justin, it's been a pretty busy morning traffic wise. It definitely has not so busy here this morning in the weather department, but we expect that it will get busier as we get into late this afternoon and tonight. Here's a look at some of our rain chances. I think by three, four, five o'clock, we're going to start to see some isolated stuff and the better chances of rain late tonight. Temperatures make it up to about 87. We've got more chances of rain too. another 60% chance Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Thank you. Good news. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back at nine. Good morning. America is next.